Hi everyone, it is super hot today. It is 32 degrees Celsius in um, the countryside where we are in UK. And um, it's, um, yeah, it's quite an interesting experience. <laughs> Anyways, um, what I thought I'll do today is just do a little um, watercolor uh, floral illustration for you and break it down so that it's very easy to follow and also we'll use um, kind of minimal um, art supplies so to speak um, so what I will do first of all is I will use ink and in this case a dip pen to draw out the flower um, so this is the Oxblood color by Diamine, very beautiful ink and it is gorgeous to draw with. Now this uh, dip pen I'm using from the, from the set that I have reviewed, so it comes to a very fine point and it's super fun to use. It actually was designed to be used for manga. Uh, comic drawings and illustrating so it's good for me um, for like fine lining and all of that if you like um, very thin lines when you're drawing that I would highly um, then I would highly recommend this dip pen and I will link everything below as always so that's for the drawing part and uh, for the painting part I will use my silver black velvet uh, brush in round four I might actually need a slightly bigger one so just in case I need a bigger size I will use the same brush in round eight so these are good uh, sizes all round to, to uh, use and in terms of watercolor I will use three purples and three greens which you can see here so I have broken it down into um, three purples that are quite uh, from different sort of ranges so this is a very purpley kind of deep color as you can see it's a very bright um, and vibrant color and I could mix it into something lighter if I wanted to but it has a nice um, property to it where depending how you use it you can actually separate two pigments and you will have these kind of pinky um, purpley um, violet colors mixed um, separately or you could um, if I sound funny today this is why my brain doesn't actually work very well under such an immense heat actually it's so hot just to give you an idea I've been uh, spritzing myself in the face with a distress sprayer uh, from Tim Holtz and the water dries like 20 seconds later so it is pretty hot um, I've got the window completely open so if you hear any noises um, I apologize in advance but I literally cannot film in any other way and um, the air that's coming in is also quite um, warm so but at least there is some sort of air circulation anyway so that's um, that. Now the Daniel Smith Lavender I picked for um, a very different purpose. It's a more, um, so I don't remember if I said that this is a, this is a transparent watercolor. This is more of a semi-opaque and um, it's got a completely different tone to it. And um, yeah, so it behaves differently. And then um, just to have something right in, in the middle of kind of, you know difference I pick this one which is a cactus flower by also by Daniel Smith and it's um, a color that if you look straight onto it it sort of looks like a potter's pink so a muted very light um, pink and then when you tilt it it has this beautiful violet uh, purpley sheen to it so I might use this one just to create a little interest now the the greens that I have picked I just I'm in love with these this tri trio of greens um, this is one of my recent discoveries the Magella leaf green I absolutely love it it's just so beautiful it almost glows it's um, very 
beautiful and vibrant yellowy green and here is a green gold by Daniel Smith so it's a little bit more earthy as you can see compared side by side which uh, is also one of my top um, favorite greens and here is sub green of course next to it so I do like using these now you might think uh, what is the flower that I am going to paint today and I picked I picked this beautiful hydrangea that I have planted in my garden and it's just so so super beautiful it's basically has these violet purple huge flowers and it's got um, three kind of heads of the hydrangeas and they're this big so they're massive and really really pretty but the thing that I find very special about this hydrangea it's got the black stem so so the contrast from the black stem to the beautiful uh, vibrant purples is is very very pretty so I'm going to um, try and illustrate this hydrangea today because it's so noisy outside and it's very hot and I'm struggling to talk, I think I will just um, let you listen to some music and watch me um, paint and then in the end we'll catch up. I don't think we got enough time to sort out all the fights. Yeah. Sort out of the lies, oh baby, yeah. Oh, no. There was a part of me that knew that, and still I'm caught by surprise. Oh. I thought you'd always be mine. Oh yeah. I guess our dreams fell asleep. There's no passion in the comatose. Yeah. Baby, going down, 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 down. Yeah. Baby, going down, 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 down. Yeah. Tried so hard to stay afloat. Yeah, we keep moving like the river goes. Yeah. Baby, going down, 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 down. Yeah. yeah. It's time I'm letting you go This time I know it for sure Just thought I should let you know Get down now, no one's no more no. I got so high on a low That's when Time for some commentary So for those of you who like ASMR I guess you'll enjoy this part Because I will be sort of whispering as it is quite late in the evening and some of my family members are already asleep and some I can hear are wandering around so um, I am proceeding here onto the watercolor part which is super fun I like the drawing stage as well but the watercolor is when I truly start enjoying seeing the colors come together and the depth and the textures of the petals and leaves of the flower in this case. So I um, will be mixing those three purples that I have shared before and I'm kind of dabbing on um, on the paper and mixing them predominantly straight on the paper rather than on the palette. Sometimes you'll see me um, mixing it in the top left corner on the ceramic um, watercolor palette and then sometimes it just do it straight on paper and that gives you a different effect. Um, I kind of had to adjust to this paper as I haven't watercolored on it for a while. This is the Stillman and Burn Beta series and watercolor behaves different on different papers and lately I have been using B paper a lot and I kind of got used to how the watercolor flows on it and here the the, the final um, effect of it is, is a different look it's kind of a little bit patchy and not only because the paper is different but later as you will realize um, the heat was so strong that the watercolor dried very quickly and so I had very little time to blend it and uh, make it sort of flow as it would usually do in the cooler days. So um, I will just let you watch the um, this sort of next part of it and then I will talk to you in a bit. 
I don't think we got enough time to sort out all the fights, yeah. to sort out all the lies. Oh, baby, yeah. Oh, no. There was a part of me that knew that. So it wasn't that long, I guess. And here I am, back to commenting. So, um, I particularly like this beautiful, juicy, bright green with this um, exact type of a lilac, like a purpley lilac kind of color. And it's such a great combo. And as it happens to be, um, actually very similar colors were on that hydrangea and I really loved it in the in the nature it seems to be a great combo so I thought why not actually applying it here and um, I think I will use this combo in other illustrations now that I can see how beautiful it is together and um, there I was mixing up a darker color and um, I think I was mixing up a grey with the perlin green and perlin green is already a great color for exact uh, purpose like this so something that you want to look very dark almost black but obviously the, you know it's it's kind of like a flower stem so it's not going to be black black there's going to be um, some green in it but it's going to be so dark that it almost looks like black and that's where perlin green came in and um, I have first done kind of like a one wash of a color and lifted it on the other side of the stem to create that illusion of um, round um, shape and dimension and then you'll see later I will do a second glaze. I have now moved on to these beautiful greens. I just, I'm loving looking at these greens even now as I'm looking at the screen. And um, yeah, I mean, sub green is my all time favorite green. And then with the new leaf green by Magella Mission Gold, it's just such a luscious and very full of like energy and vibrance and summer color um, sunlight so I love it um, right there I'm trying to correct something and this is a good way of, of using like a little flat brush and just wiggle it around and try to lift whatever you need to correct if that color is not too staining you can still do that and here I went a bit too heavy-handed with the sub green and then just started blending it out. All right, it's all dry now. It's actually so hot that I didn't even need to use a heat gun. It, uh, <laughs> I had to work really fast when um, working with the watercolor because the, the watercolor layers would dry really quickly. And if I wanted to kind of blend colors then it almost would create a glaze instead of a blend so it's just a different experience water coloring in, in hot weather anyways <laughs> I literally cannot talk today but um, that is it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and it was fun for you to follow and have a lovely day whether it's super hot where you are right now or not and uh, we'll see you soon.